So recently I received back the sapphires that I left to have heat treated at the Gem Mountain Sapphire Mine in Montana for my trip there earlier this year. These were the sapphires from right before I left them for heat treating. And here they are now. Mostly they turned out in the greenish to bluish hues, mostly falling somewhere in between in the tillish shades. I only have a few that came back more fancy colored. One is peachy with a little orange spot. One is a bright yellow and the other is a lighter pink. This three carat rough piece is the largest one that we found at Gem Mountain and left to be heat treated. It is the piece that my daughter found in some gravel we were letting her go through. It was a lighter bluish green shade and heated to a teal color with some darker blue color zoning towards the center. Anyway, this is the piece that I will be cutting. Before I dop the stone, I smooth out one of the faces a little bit to get a flat area for attaching the dop stick. Measuring the stone, I find the spot where I want the center point to be. I make some crosshair marks on the stone and on the end of the dop to use for aligning the stone while dopping. Super glue is used to attach the dot to the stone. The 360 diamond grit lap is first used to cut in some of the pavilion facets until they come close to forming a center point. The 600 grit lap is my main cutting lap. I start by cutting in four facets to form a center point. A lot of meat point fasting diagrams use the establishment of a center point as the base for cutting in the rest of the facets on the stone. The remaining facets of the first tier are cut in to meet the center point. The girdle is cut in, leaving just enough depth for cutting the crown side of the stone. As the rough stone was somewhat shallow, I am using a shallower hexagon cut that I created using GemCAD. Once 
With the girdle established, the rest of the pavilion facets can be cut into their proper meet points. A pre-polish is given to the stone using 3000 diamond grit on a tin bat lap. The final polish is done on a separate tin lap charged with 60,000 grit diamond. The transfer jig is used to attach a cone dot to the pavilion of the stone so that I can later cut the crown side of the stone. I like to wipe off any glue that gets on the girdle. Because I use heat to remove the original dop, I wrap the stone and cone dop in wet paper towel to help keep them cooler and protect the bond between the stone and the cone dop. A master lap is used to help with the alignment of the stone by setting one of the girdle facets flat on the master lap before tightening the lock screw in the quill. The same cutting sequence from 600 grit to polish is used for cutting the crown of the stone. The crown facets are cut in based off the girdle facets, the first tier facets are cut level with the girdle setting the girdle thickness, and the second tier is cut to meet at the girdle. I like to polish sapphire at about a speed of three on my Ultratech fasting machine. I really like cutting sapphires. They're one of the harder natural stones with a hardness of nine and come in all sorts of colors. They hold up well in jewelry and can turn out quite spectacular when given a good cut and polish. About half of the stones I cut are sapphires, mostly being Montana sapphires. Thank you. 
Placing the stone in acetone is the safest way to dissolve the glue and remove the stone from the dop without damaging the stone. I don't recommend heating off the finished stone when it is adhered with super glue. I really like the way this piece finished out. I think having this stone heat treated was the right way to go. I like the heated color more. That little bit of bluer color zoning helped give the stone an overall richer blue color when cut. The sapphire finished out just over a carat at 1.04 carats.